OK, then, let's get started with unlock the power of PubSub API with managed subscriptions. Obviously, we're at Dreamforce, so before we get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone in the audience here today. Thank you for joining this session. Um, some of these sessions are recorded as well, so if this is one of those recorded sessions, thank you for tuning in and watching it on Salesforce Plus. A real quick introduction. We only have 20 minutes for these sessions, so a real quick introduction of who I am, if I haven't had the pleasure to meet yourselves. My name is Jonathan Fox. I'm the AVP of Salesforce Architecture at a partner uh, called Intellect Design Arena. I'm 30 times certified, and as you can see, I've got a nice shiny golden hoodie. But that's enough about me. We're here to learn about making the PubSub API easier by using managed subscriptions. Now, managed subscriptions is a beta feature, uh, one that you can get started with today. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to get started with it and a little bit of information about it. As we've got, that says 25 minutes. I've actually only got 20 minutes. And I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction first about what the PubSub API is. I expect many of you in the audience here today have probably used the PubSub API and gotten to grips with it already. But in case you haven't, we'll have a really quick introduction and overview of what it is. We'll talk about the challenges with replay IDs. And that's the whole reason why we want to use managed subscriptions. I'll talk about what managed subscriptions actually is, the technical flow, how it works under the hood. And then we'll have a look at how we get set up with it and a little bit of a demo of how it actually works. So what is the PubSub API? The little quick overview of what the PubSub API is to build it into how to use managed subscriptions. So the PubSub API, that's the definition of the PubSub API. And you can go to developer.salesforce.com and you can read about the PubSub API if you wish. Um, but I'm calling out a couple of key points about the PubSub API in blue there, just so that you can understand the key features of the PubSub API and how it's really different to, say, the streaming API. Single interface. You publish and subscribe to platform events and real-time event monitoring events. It's gRPC, which streaming API is not. And it delivers binary events in Apache Avro format. And there's some real key differences between PubSub API and streaming API. Now, if we're calling them out and just looking at them in a little bit more detail, just for those of you who haven't had chance to play with the PubSub API at all, gRPC is Google's way of handling um, it's, it's Google's remote procedural call. It's a protocol that Google developed to make it more transparent for developers, more scalable, more easier for them to implement this uh, ability to manage events and streaming. Um, it's higher performance. And because it's encoded in Apache Avro format, that makes it easier, quicker to deserialize and serialize. You've got a quicker API going on there. The single interface part of it, well, to achieve what you can do with the PubSub API, in a single API that's published, subscribe, and get the schema, you would have to use multiple APIs to do that if you weren't going to use the PubSub API. REST API or bulk to publish the events, streaming API to subscribe, maybe metadata API to get the schema. So as you can see already, a single interface makes it much easier for developers to build applications. And then Apache Avro format, I've already mentioned, because it's encoded in that format, it makes it quicker and easier to uh, serialize, deserialize. It makes your API much quicker, means your applications built with a PubSub API are much more scalable, much more reliable. So that's a really quick overview of the PubSub API, because those of you in the audience today probably already use the PubSub API, and we're here to find out more about managed subscriptions. Now, managed subscriptions, the PubSub API in general, it still uses the same Salesforce event bus as the streaming API. You can still use your same external applications to maybe REST SOAP API, bulk API to publish to the Salesforce event bus. But you've got the PubSub API, and as you can see, it does both, publish and subscribe, and that's what you want. You might use other things like Event Relay to publish to Amazon Event Bridge. And you might want to keep everything inside Salesforce with platform tools such as Apex and Flow. And then if you're subscribing, the EMP connector with the Lightning UI. However, as you can see, the one constant through the whole event bus is the PubSub API because you can do both. And it makes lives a lot easier for you guys in the crowd when you're developing your solutions. So the PubSub API sounds great. And it is. It really makes life a lot easier for developers when you're trying to build applications that connect with Salesforce and react on these events. But there are some challenges with the PubSub API, and that's with replay IDs. Now, when it comes to replay IDs, you can see there there's an example of a, a, a payload that you might get from a platform event. And 
you get a replay ID. And that replay ID is what you need to make sure that your application manages events in a, in a way that works for your application. The replay ID is a marker. It's a way of you dis being able to understand in the sequence of events which event was the last one that you received and which one have you last processed. Now, when you subscribe to the PubSub API, there's a parameter that you can pass, the subscription option, where you can choose earliest, latest, or custom. And if you do have the replay ID, you can use the custom and provide the replay ID and pick up where you last left off. So your application disconnects, you reconnect, pass in custom, replay ID, and you pick up where you last were. If your application doesn't manage the replay IDs correctly, you're left with the earliest or latest option, earliest being all, all events on the event bus for the last 20, uh, 72 hours for the event retention window, or you're left with latest. And that means you now have all events after you connect, but all the ones that have happened since, you've missed. So you're having to toy around with the idea of, do you now have to deal with duplicate events, or do you now have to deal with missed events if you haven't captured the replay ID and you're using custom? And that's complex. That's for you now having to manage this replay ID and track which events you've actually processed or not. That makes your application much more complex. It means developers have to spend much more time writing code that handles this processing. And you now have to think about the architecture of where you're actually going to store these event um, replay IDs. That's where managed subscriptions for the PubSub API comes into play. This is where it will solve that challenge and make your life much easier as a developer and as an architect when you're trying to plan out your solutions. So what is managed subscriptions? Managed subscriptions, it's an automated replay management, replay ID management capability on the PubSub API. The PubSub API service now has a way for you to commit the last replay ID that you process. You tell Salesforce, you tell the PubSub API, I processed event number 123. And Salesforce will save that event replay ID for you. It will track it. You disconnect, you reconnect, and Salesforce understands your platform, your org, understands which replay ID was the last one that you, uh, you processed. It means you don't now have to start sending that replay ID off to your own DynamoDB or in an object store on MuleSoft or something like that. It manages it for you. What does that mean for you as an organization, as a company? It means that you don't have to manage states between clients and sessions. It means the application you build is now stateless. And that simplifies the event processing as a whole. As I mentioned, all that code that you're now building, you don't need to manage how to store it, how to query the database, how to go and get that replay ID, how to figure out your duplicate management if you have to subscribe to earliest instead of your custom. It means that the whole architecture of your application is now much more simplified because Salesforce is managing quite a tricky portion of that processing. So what does it look like under the hood? How does it actually work for the PubSub API? Quite simple, really. You subscribe using a new function called managed fetch request. And instead of subscribing to the particular topic, say the platform event or the change data capture topic, you subscribe to a managed event subscription ID or uh, API name. And that's what you pass to the PubSub API service. It will respond for the, with the events, just like the PubSub API does. In the same way that you request amount, the, the number of events in a batch, it'll give you that subscription flows still. But what you now need to do is when you've last processed an event, you commit that last event. Salesforce will store it, as you can see there. But if for whatever reason your application disconnects and there are events four, five, and six that take place whilst you're disconnected, it is fine. You don't have to tell it earliest, latest, or give it a custom with the replay ID. You simply just do the same connection that you did to start with. Manage fetch request. Salesforce knew that your last one that you committed was event number three. So it now gives you four, five, and six, because they're the ones that you missed. No more having to query your databases. No more having to store your events. Salesforce has done it for you. So how do you get started with it? How do you actually set up managed event subscriptions? And how do you start using it within your Salesforce org today? Well, there's two ways that you could really do it. You could start using the tooling API. There's an example here of how you could make a request using Postman. Tooling API, your standard tooling API 
the endpoint managed event subscriptions. That's the object that you're going to be sending a post request to. And you can see there the JSON payload. You're going to give it some typical sort of uh, parameters, some typical sort of attributes. You're going to give it a full name. That's the API name that you'll, you can use to subscribe with. And typically in Salesforce naming conventions, you might put underscores and do it however you do it within your org. There's some of the additional bits that you need to think about. So the metadata, the label is just the label of the record, we'll call it, the, the managed subscription that you're creating. The topic name, that's the important bit. That's the topic that you are creating a managed subscription for. So that could be your platform event, your custom platform event. It could be real-time event monitoring event. It could be slash data slash opportunity change event, because it might be that you're making this for change data capture events. Now, the default, default replay, that's in case you've never connected using managed subscriptions before. The service needs to know, what do you want to do? You've never connected with this before. Do you want to do earliest, or do you want to do latest? In a similar way, error recovery replay. Do you want to use earliest or latest in case that replay ID that you committed didn't get committed properly? So there's a fail safe, there's a backup option in case the service doesn't work in the way it's intended. And then finally, state, run or stop. It's almost like your own feature flag. An admin, a developer, whoever in your organization who does this bit, you need to turn it off for whatever reason, you can patch it and do a stop instead. And what you get in return is that ID. And that ID is what you can use to subscribe using the managed fetch request, or you can use the full name, whichever you prefer, both are accepted. And again, you might decide you want to put this into your CI CD pipelines, and you've done an amazing job. You've tested this in sandboxes. So you're sending it through your pipelines. And you need to use the metadata API instead. Well, it's the same sort of things, all the same attributes. But what you can see here is the directory that it would be in within your Salesforce project. And that's managed event subscriptions. But the XML pretty much mirrors the JSON that you saw on the tooling API. So an example use case, how we might you use this in an organization, and where might this fit within your organization? I've got a financial services customer, RT Wealth, and they use a bunch of different things on the Salesforce platform. They have financial services cloud. But what they have is a Salesforce mobile app. Well, they have the mobile app. It's powered by Salesforce Mobile Publisher, which means they create an experience cloud site. And they wrap Mobile Publisher around that experience cloud site, meaning that they now have a mobile app on Android and Apple. And their customers can now access financial data on the go on their mobile devices. Fantastic. That's great. What the mobile app actually allows is for people to make changes to their investments. Now, because this is a wealth, wealth management organization, they're really interested in security. Security of the app, security of their financial data and their clients. So what they need to do is utilize Salesforce mobile security policies, which comes part of the Salesforce mobile publisher product. And it means that they can track things like jailbreak detention, detection or man in the middle attacks. This is fantastic. They get published as platform events on the Salesforce platform. But they're building an application to create alarms and monitor these metrics. What happens if those, that, that application goes down? What happens if the connection fails and they lose the platform events that are published, they're not going to be able to find out that 100 of their clients have just opened the mobile publisher app and had a man in the middle attack. And they needed that alarm to be created so that it could react to a cybersecurity incident. Now, that's important for them. What they would have to do, they connect to the PubSub API, and they would either have to do earliest or latest. They either have duplicate events that could mess up their monitoring, or they have to try and handle, or they have missed events, which is crucial when it comes to something like this and monitoring cybersecurity. Because they haven't been able to capture that custom, that replay ID, and they can't resubscribe using the custom uh, parameter on the subscription options. That's an issue for them. So instead, what they're using is the PubSub API's beta feature, manage subscriptions. Because now they just connect back to the PubSub API, and they pick up where they last left off. It knows which event they last subscribed to. And we can see that in action. Now, there, this is just a, a, you know, the terminal window. And they're connected to the PubSub API, the managed subscriptions um, API service. 
and you can see we've connected. We started the managed subscriptions, and that was the ID that I got when I created it through the tooling API. And you can see, actually, we haven't got any events at the moment. Uh, oh, no, we have. We have got an event, because somebody has opened the app since I last connected using the PubSub API. This is a fantastic already. You can see somebody has connected, opened the mobile publisher app whilst I've been talking. Now, we might close the connection. Something happens. We break the connection. There's a fatal error. And somebody opens on their mobile device the, the financial services app. That's going to publish a platform event. And what I can do now is when I reconnect to the PubSub API service, what we will now see, or we should see, is a couple more events on the event bus waiting for us. What I didn't have to do was provide any replay IDs. There you go. You can see they've just jumped off the top of the screen. I didn't have to provide a replay ID. I also didn't have to worry about missing events or managing the duplicate events, because I got the ones that I'd missed and nothing else. And that's what's really important about this feature. It makes it so much easier for developers and architects building these solutions. So what have we covered? That's the session. And it's a really simple feature that solves a really big challenge for developers building that logic and architects trying to figure out what they're going to do to solve the, where they're going to store it and keeping those databases reliable and available. But there's three main things that we've took away from this session. The overview of the PubSub API, it's a really cool feature. PubSub API is really strong and powerful for you connecting your external applications to Salesforce. It's quick, it's bi-directional, and you can control what goes on much easier than using, say, the streaming API with REST API and metadata API. It's all in one single interface. Managed subscriptions part. We've looked at now, you don't need to worry about that handling of replay IDs. Salesforce does it for you, reducing the complexity. And the benefits you get from this is that's offloaded to Salesforce, and your event-driven architecture is far more simpler, meaning you can focus your times on what is really important within your organizations and build much more reliable and scalable um, third-party clients that connect to Salesforce and really do enable your organization. I've got a couple of resources. Now, these links, I'm going to flash up a QR code in a second. Tooling API, metadata API on the managed event subscriptions. If you want to understand a little bit more about the metadata behind the actual object and those, param th those um, parameters that I showed you earlier. Some more information on managed event subscriptions as a whole. Um, and that'll tell you some of the nuances, limitations, those kind of things that you probably want to figure out and have a look at when you're building this. There's a GitHub repo, which is really important for you to get started. There's a Golang, Java, and Python example, so you can get started really quickly. And then Nia's blog, explaining all this in much more detail, more than I could do in 20 minutes, is a really, really interesting blog. And I'd absolutely um, advocate you go and read that blog. If you want those links, give that QR code a scan. It should take you to a Google Drive, um, a Google Doc with all the links clickable. But that's. Managed event subscriptions. Thank you, everyone, for joining the session. I really appreciate it, and I hope you have a great rest of your Dreamforce. If you can scan the QR code, fill out the survey. It would be much appreciated. Um, it really does help us understand how well our sessions went. Thank you, everyone.